Hi, my name is Dr. Gary Benetra and welcome to another video tutorial on databases. Last video we talked about the difference between third normal form and Boyce-Codd normal form. In this video we're going to look at how you can do a decomposition on a database so that it'll be in Boyce-Codd normal form. Now we're going to use a special algorithm which is called the paired attribute algorithm. And if you look in the course notes on page 14, that you'll see a couple theorems as to why the paired attribute algorithm works. And so in this video, we're going to look at the mechanics of how you go about applying the paired attribute algorithm to get a decomposition that is in voice cod normal form. Now it would be really nice if we could just take Bernstein synthesis, do a decomposition, and voila, we're in Boyce Cod normal form. Unfortunately, there's no guarantee that that will place us in Boyce Cod normal form, so that's why we need this algorithm called the paired attribute algorithm. So let's take a look at an example. Okay, on your right, you will see a little example here where we have R, A, B, C, D, and a set of functional dependencies where we have A functioning term in C, B, C functioning term in A, and C function determines D. Now in the paired attribute algorithm what we do we have a main routine which will take the attributes in pairs such, a, such as A, B, A, C, A, D, then B, C, B, D, C, D and it looks for a violation which is talked about on page 14 of the unit 6 notes. If we have a violation we go into what's called the decompose routine otherwise we would stay at the main routine. So let's take a look to see how this would actually work. First thing we want to do is set up a variable called z. And z will contain all the attributes of r. Now in our main routine we're going to try something like this. r minus first pair r minus a b which in this case would be equal to what? C, D, and we take that closure. If that closure contains the A and B, we have a violation and then we need to go and do a decomposition. So what is C, D closure here? It's just C, D. So we have no problems with the pair A, B. We take the next pair, AC, and we do R minus AC, which is BD. We take the closure, and BD closure is BD. So that does not contain the AC. We're okay. We take the next pair, which is AD. So R minus AD is BC. We take BC closure, and what is BC closure? Well, we know by reflexivity it's going to be at least the B and the C. And BC function determines A, so we can add an A. And C function determines D, so we're going to get everything. So BC closure contains both the A and the D, and so we do have a violation at this point. Now what we would do, we would call the decompose routine, and <clears throat> let me show you how that works. First of all we said we create a variable Y which gets all the attributes of Z, and then we do the R minus the AD, we're going to have BC closure get ABCD again. Now, since this closure contained both the A and the D, we can get rid of either the A or the D. And now for a 10 second interruption. If we have R minus XY, assume it's ABC, we take the closure. If that closure contains either the X or the Y, it doesn't have to contain both, then we need to go to the decompose routine. Now at this point, R minus AD is BC closure, which contains both the A and the D. We could either get rid of the A or we could get rid of the D. 
I'm choosing just to get rid of the day D, but it's arbitrary choice. So our Y is now A, B, C. We're down to three attributes. Here's what we do at this point. Given three attributes, we try combinations of R minus A, B, R minus A, C, or R minus B, C. Let's try out a couple of these. R minus A, B is going to be C. C closure is just C. R minus A, C is B closure. And B closure is just B. R minus B, C equals A closure. And A closure will be A, C, D. A, C, D contains the C, so we get rid of the B. When we get rid of the B, what do we have left? We have the pair AC. Now when we're down to the pair AC, we ask ourselves the following question. What was the last thing that was included? And that was the C. So all this down here is part of the decompose routine. Now that we're down to in two attributes, we, we know this decomposition will be in Boyce Codd normal form because there's a theorem in unit six notes that says if you have a subschema with an arity of two, that is automatically in Boyce Codd normal form. So the first part of the decomposition is AC. So I'm going to call that R1 with attributes AC. And since the C was the last thing that was included, we remove that from our set. So at this point, our Z has been reduced from A, B, C, D to A, B, D. Now we, we, we know from the previous iteration that R minus A, B don't really need to do this, it's D closure, which is D. Okay, we probably pick up where we left off, but I'm just doing that as an exercise. If we did R minus A D closure, the result is B closure, and B closure looking over here is just B. Now let's try the next pair. R minus B, D gives us A. A closure is A, C, D. So we see that this A closure contains one of the attributes here, in this case the D. So we need to call the decompose routine. So Y gets all the attributes of Z. And now we do the following. R minus B, D, the result is A, A closure, A, C, D, just like before. And now we do the following. Since it includes the D, we remove the B. So we now have Y equals A, D, and we're down to a pair. We can't reduce it anymore. This is in Boyce Codd normal form. So we return this pair, we ask ourselves what was the last thing that was included, and that was the D. So what do we do? We actually remove the D from our set, and we return the pair AD, which is another relation subschema. So we put R2 as AD. At this point, Z equals AB. When you're down to two attributes, you know this is going to be in Boyce Codd normal form, so there's really no point in going any further with this, and we're actually done. So R3, R3 would be AB. So the decomposition is AB, AC, AD. And we're now done 